Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for hanging in there all the way to the end. Uh, thanks for the organizers for the opportunity to come and speak in this very last slot of the very last session. And um, I'll have to figure out a way to express my gratitude for that speaking slot a little bit later on. But uh, for those of you that are not close friends and blood relatives that are left in the audience, uh, my name is Michael Hansen, and I'm with Microsoft. I work for, with a group called Healthcare Next. But uh, prior to that role, which is new to me, I was a cloud solution architect, and I spent quite a bit of time deploying various fire-related stuff uh, into our cloud. So while the title of the talk here is about API management, it's really more generically about deploying fire-related stuff into the cloud, how you can automate that and use um, high-level services for that. There's a, a specific uh, tool that I'll be, uh, that I made, um, which is available here, and uh, the URL is aka.ms slash fire to APIM, and that's kind of some automation for deploying API management on top of any fire endpoint that you might have, and I'll, I'll be showing that here. So just to set the stage for what we're talking about here, um, I'm really talking about leveraging cloud resources that are a little bit higher level. Uh, and just since everybody here is probably not cloud uh, computing experts, I want to sort of explain what I mean by that. So down at the bottom here, this is a, maybe a little bit of an overwhelming overview of some of the services that we have available in our cloud. But what I wa just wanted to show here was that down at the bottom of this stack, you have your basics of cloud computing, which is like your virtual machines, your storage, your networking, and so on. Uh, but those services, and those are interesting, and you can do a lot of those with those services. But what I'm really talking about is leveraging some of the higher level services. So for instance, hosting fire servers in an application hosting platform where you don't take care of the underlying virtual machines, you don't own the operating system, but you just deploy your code that has a lot of advantages. And similarly, on the, in the integration space, using something like API management, uh, which is what I'll be speaking about as well. So it's really, you know, the stuff down at the bottom here, I like to think that we do that as well as everybody else. Uh, and we can, of course, have long debates about that, but it's really up here in the upper layers where, where different cloud platforms uh, have specific features that you may want to think about leveraging. And just to make this a little bit more clear, the reason why this is important is that there are different things that you take responsibility for when you move stuff into the cloud. So you can have cloud computing on premises, right? You can build your own data center, you can stick a bunch of boxes in there, and then you own everything. You own the computers, the hard drives, and when something breaks, you're responsible for it. And then, of course, you can move to the cloud, and that takes away the hardware piece of it, and you can run what we call infrastructure as a service, which is great, but you still you're running a virtual machine that you put an operating system on. This operating system needs to be patched and kept up to date and current and all this stuff to be in compliance. And there is work associated with it that, that, that most people that I know, um, uh, you know, don't care much about, right? It's not something that we actually want to spend our time on. And then there's these platform as a service offerings uh, where really all you bring is your data and your code. And this is where I think some, real, some of the real power of cloud computing comes. On the, on the far end of this is software as a service, which would be your webmail and so on. It's not really relevant here. But I have a repository here on GitHub uh, where I've put together some templates for how to deploy different uh, fire servers into our cloud. And so here you can deploy the uh, Firely Wonk server with different backend databases, Happy Fire server, and so on. And what, what's nice about these is these are templated deployments that will deploy everything you need to run a Fire server. So the front end uh, server, a backend database, and so on. But again, without having any virtual machines. We, we take care of the entire platform, the runtime stack, everything. All that gets deployed in there is some code, so you can leverage the entire platform in terms of compliance and other things and actually run your file server in there. It's great for deploying quick sandboxes and so on, but it's actually also quite nice for production because you can now leverage the full scale of the database platforms and so on. The, the templates that I have in there, they deploy both in the commercial cloud but also in the government cloud if, if you're working with the with government customers where we have, where these services that we leverage have FedRAMP uh, compliance and so on. 
So just as an example, here, here's the template for deploying the uh, Happy Fire server. And what that will deploy is our app service environment where, it, where we host the Java front end and then a managed SQL Azure database on the back end. And so you simply hit the button here, it'll take you to the portal, you deploy the stuff you need, and then you have a, a, a Happy Fire server at the end of this. So initially I planned on kind of going live here and start demoing this, but I'd seen a few near misses yesterday as I was seeing presentations. So I've actually screenshotted my way through most of it um, just to uh, make sure that we get to the end. So this is what the portal would look like with these resources deployed. So this is what get de gets deployed for, for a Happy Fire server, a web front end, a back end database, and I can click into the actual um, web front end here, and here would be the URL of this Happy Fire server that I can hit, and so you have access to a Happy Fire server and so on. It's, there's nothing spectacular about this, but what's nice about it as a developer, and, and, and even if you think about this for production, is again, there are no virtual machines here, right? This is, this is the open source Happy Fire server, and I've deployed it, and it's operational, and I have a fully cloud scale, you know, globally redundant database on the back end and everything, and I have not configured a single virtual machine, and I don't have no operating systems to patch at the end of all of that. So I think that's, that's quite nice. But of course, you want to do more than that. You want to put some stuff on top of this. And uh, we also have integration services that are also managed services like these. And, and our integration services consist of things like, uh, you know, logic apps would be our sort of orchestration engines. You can use these to shuttle data from one place to the other. We have messaging bosses, event grids, and so on. But what I wanted to highlight here is, is API management. And API management is like a broad concept. There's nothing particularly unique about our offering. It's a managed service in the government cloud. It has FedRAMP high accreditation and so on, but it really offers what a lot of these platforms offer is, is kind of three different things. If we, if we start from the bottom, you have an administrative portal where you can go and publish new APIs in. You also have a gateway that mediates access to this backend API. So this is where you validate tokens and figure out who has access to what data and so on. And you can write very elaborate policies in there um, so that you can put a different governance layer on top of a fire server that may not have this stuff built into it. But you can, you can write your policies here. Uh, so you can, you can essentially take a uh, uh, maybe not quite as feature-rich on the security side, fire server, and then bolt this on top and then get your policies and all that worked out in there. So it kind of separates those things. And it also provides a developer portal, and I'll, I'll show some screenshots of that, where your developers can come in, they can look at what APIs are available, uh, they can look at code samples, uh, and so on, and they can go through the whole flow of getting data, putting data, and so on into your APIs, but also ha test things like OAuth and other stuff that's, uh, that's in there. So that's, again, there's nothing particularly unique about this. This is just our flavor of, of offering this kind of service. You can, again, also stand up API management in your own virtual machines, but this is one that we manage for you. So in addition to this, I've written a small tool uh, that uh, I call Fire to APIM, and that's what that URL in the beginning was for, and I, I'll, I'll put that URL on the, the last slide. But what that does is it gives you an endpoint where, you, where I can simply send it the URL of a particular Fire server. And what it will do is it will go grab the capability statement of that Fire server, and it will turn it, turn it into a Swagger definition uh, of the API that's associated with this, so uh, automated for you. And it will also fetch a deployment template that you can send to the um, Azure portal or Azure resource management. And those two things combined will then deploy an instance of Azure API management and configure it already with all the endpoints that you have in your API and OAuth and other things that you want to have uh, on this so that it's a completely uh, automated process for you. And coincidentally, this Fire to API M is, is also a service that I'm running in an app service uh, so that you guys can access it. But that's also an open source project and you can go on down, it's written in .NET, you can go download this code and deploy it uh, on your own server if you wanted to tinker with it or you know, make modifications to it, it's not very elaborate. So uh, again, this was where I was gonna go live, but I'm gonna screenshot my way through it here. 
This is what the tool looks like in your browser. It's a different URL here, but if that alias that I put in, aka.ms slash fire to APIM, will take you here. And it's a very simple tool. It looks like this. And you have a, a, little URL, a little box here where you can put in the URL of a fire server and then just hit this generate swagger button. And that, you can use that on its own without uh, wanting to, without needing to use uh, Azure API management. And what that will do is just return for this fire endpoint, it will return the swagger definition, assuming that the capability in statement is, is, is you know, not insane and all that. But uh, if, if it's a, it's a valid uh, capability statement, it will return the swagger definition for it. And then you have buttons down here also to deploy an API management instance either to the government cloud or the, or the regular cloud. But if I hit the generate swagger button here, I will simply get a swagger definition back uh, of this API. And actually, there's a bunch of additional methods on this endpoint where you can selectively choose what resources do you actually want to expose in your API. You may have a bunch of resources in your API, but you don't want to expose them. You may only want patient and observation, for instance. And then you can, you can choose to do that. So uh, let's say that I wanted to deploy for the uh, Wonk, the Filey's Wonk server here, and I can simply hit deploy to Azure. And what it will do is it will take me to my Azure portal where I'm now logged in, and then it will allow me to fill in some additional stuff. This is the file server URL. Here's some stuff for my API management. Here are the interactions and resources that I want to expose. I'm just going to take all of them. I want to call my API filey and so on. And there is also the ability to add your OAuth information if you wanted to configure this API with uh, OAuth um, on the front of it. If you don't, it will just be generally accessible. But if you fill in those details, then that will be uh, configured for you as well. And then it will take a little while, and then you get an API management instance. And here I'm showing a screenshot from the developer portal that then becomes available for you. And this is the generic uh, sort of uh, styling and look and feel of this developer portal, but it's actually uh, customizable. You can put your own graphics and all the text and everything here is something that you can configure. This is just how it comes out of the box. And you can click into the APIs that are available in this uh, developer portal. And I'm now, you can see I have two of them here. This is actually the Happy Fire, the public Happy Fire server, and this is the Firely server um, that, that has been deployed. But you can deploy as many different as you want in here. And then you can click in and you can, as a developer, walk through, look at the different endpoints that are available all the, you know, the, the search parameters and so on that are in there, all of this gets configured automatically based on your capability statement that has been converted to the, the Swagger file. And then you can, of course, test these endpoints. And here I've, I have an example here of one that I've configured with OAuth uh, on the back end, but I'm not providing a token right now to access this. So, of course, now I'm getting a, a message that I cannot actually access this, but built into the developer portal, is the ability for you to click or uh, click the login button. It's, it's actually a little bit further up this page, so you can't see it right now. But you would click that. It will take you through the authentication process, and then it will populate the request now with the bear, bearer token before you send it again, and now I get, a, I get a 200. So this whole process of how you would interact with your API, the OAuth, token validation, but also debug tracing of policies and everything that you have on it. It's all built, built into the API management. And, and it gets configured and managed for you automatically. And again, now this is a service. You're not running any virtual machines to do this. So it's nice for sandbox developments and production and, and, and everything. So I can see I'm down to my last minute. So that's good because uh, this is my last slide. Uh, so here's the URL again, to, uh, to try out this tool. Again, the tool is open source, so if you wanted to download the tool and run it yourself, you can just do that. Oh, the, the last slide is gone here, but I'm sure you caught it. And otherwise, my, my, my email address was, oh, there you go. My email address is on there as well, so feel free to, to, uh, to reach out. This, this was just some example of how you can use uh, these tools in the platform. And thank you. And safe travels to the ones that are traveling.